Now yeah, Cal Jameson's trying to blackmail me, and I don't know what to do. What does he want to get off your back, Bobby? Five hundred dollars, or he's going to tell everybody about the time I spent with Lorraine. What? I'm pretty sure Jameson's just an alias, so who knows? All right, well, you didn't let me finish. He gave me his address last night, so I had no way to send the money, and it's in Canada somewhere, Quebec. Oh, good. Well, bring it with you when you come to meet me later, okay? Sure. Now, are you absolutely sure that everything is set for your trip up to the lake tonight? Oh, it's all set. You want to come along, see the fireworks? Look, are you crazy? The reason why I asked you to take care of this for me is so that nobody would know I was involved, especially this Higgins guy. Whatever you say, sis. Hello, Scotty. Hi, Laura. Hello, Bob. How you doing? Huh? Sounds like your two favorite people just walked in, huh? Every time I see her these days, it makes my blood boil. No kidding. But it won't be long now. Little Laura Weber is not going to be so smug and stuck up tomorrow if we pull off my little plan. Wee, Bobby. You, Luke, I meant you. I could never do it without you. Why is it you can find time to file your nails and you can't find any time to file my reports? Priorities, Alan. My sister-in-law's giving her first big dinner party tonight. I wouldn't want to embarrass her by looking anything less than my best. It's your tongue that's usually the embarrassment, not your nails. Alan, if it'll ease your mind, I will write my solemn oath in blood. Whose? Whether you want to believe it or not, Alan! I do have manners. Well, you didn't show a sign of them last night at dinner. It was just family, brother dear. Quartermains and Gail Adamson. I thought it was perfectly all right to ask an innocent question about what Leslie Weber thought of the new Monica. Tracy, I mean this. I mean this, Tracy. If you do anything, and I mean anything at all, to ruin Monica's party, or embarrass any of her guests, especially Rick and Leslie, I will personally escort you to the door. You know what, Alan? You don't know me very well because I would never do anything to jeopardize You would do it in a second. But you better not. Not tonight. Excuse me, would you? Hello. Fundraising headquarters for the cardiac wing, Tracy Quartermain speaking. Hi, Gladys. Terrific. Please ask him to pick me up at 7 o'clock. I'll be waiting in my suite for Mr. Williams. Thank you very much. Goodbye. They must pay the assistant district attorneys very well in this town if Mitch Williams can afford a social secretary. Gladys is just a plain old secretary. Mitch is a very busy man. Well, Gladys couldn't be if she's got time to make dates for him. What does it matter who called, Alan? The point is, Mitch is coming. I hope he knows what he's getting himself into. He does. And so do I. Well, I am so glad that you and Nick are going to be at Monica's tonight. Thank you. I still feel a little funny about being out of the house, knowing that Scotty and Laura are driving all the way up to the lake. Well, why? You know how responsible Scotty is. Why, Laura couldn't be in better hands. Yeah, I know that. It's just that there are so many things that could happen that he couldn't control. He could have some kind of trouble. Oh, now nothing is going to happen tonight. Nothing that he can't handle. Mm. And besides, they both know where you and Rick are going to be tonight, just in case. Yes, I know. It's just knowing that they're driving so far away uh, with that early curfew. Look, <sighs> Scotty has borrowed Lee's car. And Annie's asked for permission to leave the hospital early so he can go home and change his clothes before he picks up Laura. He is well aware of her curfew. Yeah. And that's why he wants to get to the lodge early, so, so that they won't have to be rushed. I know I probably shouldn't worry, but I do. Every night, until I know she's in the house, safe and on time. Well, you are not going to worry tonight because we're not going to let you. Okay. All your good friends are going to be at Monica's and... And we've just missed you so much, we're not going to let anything put a damper on the evening. Thank you, friend. I appreciate that. <laughs> 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 There's Leslie and Gail. Why don't you
don't you join him and I'll take care of the call. Oh, thank you. Sure. Hi, ladies. Hello, Monica. Hello. Looks like the surgery went well. Yes, I am happy to report. Rick did a brilliant job. And the patient's now in recovery. Would you like to join us? Uh, sure. Rick is going to get me some coffee, so I'll get another chair. Uh, would you please just tell me your secret? What secret? You were having eight people for dinner tonight. Here you are, having coffee, relaxed. How do you do that? Room service. <laughs> One of the joys of living in a hotel. All I did was pick up the phone this morning, call the chef, give him my order, and hopefully everything will be all ready when you arrive. Hopefully. That must be terrific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. And, Leslie, I, I am so glad you didn't object to Mitch Williams coming. I really think Tracy would be impossible if he couldn't. She just might be anyway. Yeah, well, at least uh, she'll start the evening being civil. And if Mr. Williams has the good taste, not to mention the trial or you and Laura, a good time should be had by all. Well, as I told you when you first asked, uh, he's not one of my favorite people in the whole world. But the way I feel about uh, all of that experience is that um, the very best thing we could possibly do would be to put it all in the past and let it stay there. That's exactly where it belongs, in the past, only to be uh, awakened at times of weddings and funerals. <laughs> right, ladies? Uh, a little cream in here, so will you like it? Thank you. Yeah, well, um, you're in good spirits, I see. Monica told us how well the surgery went. Congratulations. Thank you, but that is only half of it. I am anticipating a very relaxed evening with my wife and dear friends. Our daughter is going out this evening with a very fine young man. And I think that sounds like the perfect picture, doesn't it? <laughs> Not only perfect, but well-deserved. Yes. I'll drink to that one. Cheers. Mm -hmm. To uh, good friends. Mm. Mm. Hey, you uh, <laughs> On that note, this good friend has to get herself back down to the clinic. Oh, oh so soon, Leslie. Yeah, I left Dr. Gonzalez all alone, and I'm sure he'd like a break, too. Look, I'll be ready to leave in about an hour. How about you? Uh, I should be ready by then, yes. Good. Why don't I meet you in the lobby, and we'll stop by the book room, pick up Laura, and we can drive back to the house together. Fine. I'll, uh, I'll talk to her as soon as she comes out of her appointment with Peter. Honey, would you tell her... I know she's very anxious to get up to the lake just as soon as she can, but I'd like us just to spend a few minutes together as a family before Scotty picks her up. Sure. I'll tell her. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to the night, Les. Bye, Les. Don't you think it's awfully short notice to be canceling out on our date, Mitch? I'm well, not canceling out. I just don't know when I'll be free. That's all. Mm -hmm. So if it gets too late, Susan, don't wait up, because I would feel just... Hurt. Hey, just cut the sarcasm. I'll call you here, I'll call you at the hotel when I get free, all right? That doesn't give me very much to go on, does it, Mitch? I'm sorry. It's the best I can do. What came up so suddenly? Another business dinner? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could, you could say that, yeah. With whom? Look, my private life is my own business now. Not when it affects me, Mitch. I have feelings, too, you know. Sure. That's why I've always been honest about us from the very beginning. No holes, no ties, just a good time. Well, I thought since we'd been seeing so much of each other that maybe that had changed a little, that being a little more serious, perhaps? Maybe, maybe. Don't spoil it by getting possessive, you know? Because I hate to feel caged. All right. You win. Can I be very honest with you about something? Yeah, sure. You are very special to me. Yeah, you're very special to me too, Susan. Make me believe that. I've seen you just about every night since we met. When you could fit me in, yes. Yeah, right. And when I fit you in, I was always straight. When I couldn't, I was always straight. Like tonight, I came down here all the way down. Huh? That makes me special. You're darn right it does. How would you treat a less special relationship? I'd have Gladys call for me. She handles all my business calls. But not the personal ones? No, not the personal ones. Well, just be sure that I stay on that personal list. You keep that up, you'll keep right on top. Good. I'll call you soon. 
I'll be here. Have a nice time. May I help you? Oh, thank you, but I'm just waiting for someone. I'll wait over here. Uh, if you tell me who you're waiting for, I'll be sure to send them right over when they come in. Thank you very much, but I'm sure she'll find me. Whatever you say. Enjoy your drink. Thanks a lot. Well, hello, Bobby. How are you today? Mr. Baldwin, hi. I haven't seen you in so long. I've missed you. Yeah. How is everything with you? Well, I'm working hard, which is the reason now Gail and I have not followed up on our invitation to take you to the club for dinner, but we're going to do it now, one side soon. That's a promise. Well, you just named the night. I'm sure I'll be free. <laughs> hey, Lee. Lee, I was just on my yeah. on, on the way to the office to pick up the car. Oh, well, in that case, I may have saved you a trip. Oh, good. I'll park right outside. Thanks. Listen, I'll have it back to you tomorrow, okay? Well, now, there's no rush. You just drive carefully tonight. Okay? I will. Scotty, how are you today? I'm okay, Bobby. Busy. Good. <clears throat> well, listen, can you join me for a cup of coffee? Got time? Yeah, I do now that you saved me that bus ride, but I can't stay very long because i got to give myself plenty of time to go home and change so I can get back over to the Weber house to pick up Laura. Well, I won't keep you long, I promise. Okay. Bobby, it's good to see you again, and don't forget, dinner. I won't forget. It's good to see you again, and don't forget, dinner. I won't forget. Bobby, I know I'm late, but please don't report Andrea, me. don't worry about it. Your timing was perfect. I thought you always went to the cafeterias on your breaks. Oh, uh, well, yeah, usually I do, but I feel like I need a breath of fresh air today. And besides, I just love these sunny December days, don't you? See you later. If you would like to call your friend and see what's keeping her, there is a telephone right around the corner. Thank you. I'm in no rush. Okay. If you need any more help, I'll be right over at the bar. Fine. Thanks again. Luke, hi. I'm sorry. Where the I'm hell late. have you been? I was just about to call the hospital and find out what happened to you. Oh, well, my relief nurse was a few minutes late, but it worked out perfectly. Talk over, talk over here, all right? Where we have some okay, privacy. Okay, okay. All right. Now, do you have the description of the car I'm to look for up at the lodge? I can do a lot better than that. That's what I meant. I said that it was a good thing I was late. See, Mr. Baldwin came by the hospital and he dropped off the car. So, while I was on my way over, I got... Ta-da! The license number. Ta-da! Pretty clever, huh? That'll help. Bobby, where are you going to lay your hands on 500 bucks if Jamin's is serious about blackmailing you? I don't know. Um, maybe I can stall him or something. Oh, good luck. Well, maybe you'll be able to track him down by then, or maybe the police will arrest him or maybe or you'll be up a creep. Luke, please, first things first, all right? Now, let's get back to tonight. What time can you be up at the lake? I thought I'd leave in about an hour. Did you call and leave a reservation in Scotty Baldwin's name? Not yet. I'll do it when I get there. Don't Luke, worry. Luke, you be so thick at it sometimes. Hey, hey. Look, I'm doing you the favor, so watch the insults, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. But if you make the room reservation in person... Brooke there? No, just call information. Uh, yes, operator, I'd like the number of the Lake Shore Lodge. No. What, Lake View, isn't it? Yeah. Lake View Lodge. In the mountains above Brewster. Cents. Give me some change. Uh, just a minute, operator. I'm coming, I'm coming. Yes, good afternoon. I'd like to make a reservation, please. Sure. Connect me to the front desk. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a reservation. Do you have any accommodations available for tonight? For two. Tell me you want a double bed. Shh. I'd like a double bed if you have one available. <laughs> oh, fine. My name is Scotty Baldwin. My address. Oh. Uh, just a moment, please. Two o three seven Campus Heights Road, Port Charles. 
no, no, you don't have to worry about us showing up. Check the dining room. I already have reservations for tonight. Oh, thank you. Sound authentic enough for you? Look, you were fantastic. Thank you, thank you. I don't know how I'm ever going to be able to thank you for this. Don't worry, Bobby. One day I'll think of a way.